Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm Weir Rider. Also joining us is Evgeny. My show and tell is too far, and I'm not going to get for it, but, wow. I'm, but I'm looking at it. I see it on the floor, so that will happen in a future episode, maybe. Okay. Hi, good, I'm Argent. Good, good talk. Also joining us is Shannon. Hi, you know me as Gray. And lastly, we have Jesse. Hi, I'm Lady Lameness, and I was told directly by Chaos to make fun of him for putting me last. That's not what I said. That's what he said, yeah. That's No, I said you would <laughs> do that. I did not tell you to, but I knew exactly. you would. So then I did do that. Okay, okay. Self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> okay, great. Very good. I mean, Evgeny, do you want to get the show and tell? We do, we're supposed to do show Fine, and tell after the you intro. You convinced me. Readers, readers, watchers, viewers, listeners, singers. singers. I have returned with a mug okay. from my workplace. Wow. It says, best answer wins. Oh. Well, I mean, this is a WAB <laughs> episode, so that, that's I, actually think, somewhat fitting. <laughs> and I think this is very appropriate for our fandom. Yes, so, true. So when people true. were like, so when you were presenting a theory and people were like, I think this is wrong, you, you gotta win that conversation. Like, that's, oh, no, 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 no. Like, no. Break their spirits <laughs> no. and win this conversation. Don't stop until they bleed. <laughs> Out of their nose ears. Read our 17 shard code of conduct for how you should actually <laughs> purport yourself during discussion. Roll until we roll that nat 20 on persuasion or intimidation. Great. Thanks for peeking that, buddy. That's great. I love that. Uh, I am here to peek with my best answer that wins. Do we have any other show and tell guys? <laughs> I don't have show and tell, but definitely uh, when you uh, went to put that on the desk, Arja, just like the quick flash, I thought it was a TARDIS. Like, it just looked like a TARDIS, the blue and the white. Oh, just... the, okay. Okay. I thought I flashed something, but no, it was my mug that no. flashed. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Jesus I have a TARDIS, Christ. but it's like on the floor over there because I have cats. Okay. Well, and I can't uh, get out of my a tiny corner to go get it. It's dust. surrounded by cables, just in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> just is surrounded by cables. <laughs> Full matrix. Yes. Uh, I also have. I'm. I'm once again drinking. Uh, as you can see, this this clearly very green drink. <laughs> uh, that is that is kind of like a kind of like a grasshopper. I'm I'm improvising a little bit. I have a tennis uh, ball. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes all the all the dream it's it's really it really tickles me that i can like kind of see behind myself when i do that yeah green, green screens are fun green screens green are fun screens i do are fun. i do recommend i them. like that we're starting at completely unhinged i'm very interested to see i will be at I, have all that's just so... I have no other oh, holes that's... i know I, that's we gotta set the tone so listeners know what they're getting into. We, you know, we that is, that is we true. really have our craft. Show, they really should know by now. They really, yeah. they yeah. If, yeah, if yeah, you're just, new I mean, to this episode, uh, if, if you were, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for joining. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching our Brandon interview, which was so good. Great job, Evgeny. I glad you liked it because we did lots of meetings to prepare for that. <laughs> like like so many yeah. to get those questions down. We had the whole like exec, exec suite of the 17 shard. Like we went on like a weekend retreat out in the Pacific Ocean. No, to, that's like... not what happened. We we had the cast members and me and we 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 discussed and we we solicited questions. And so in this WAB episode, you'll get to know who in fact suggested each question. Boom. Or at least both comments sometimes because there were some just questions and stuff. So that was cool. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some wobs. Uh, I naively, so you might be wondering, why is this coming out so much after the interview? Uh, and that's because I'm an idiot. And I thought there weren't enough wobs to fill an episode. <laughs> and uh, I think we're going to be doing two episodes. So I pasted them into our document and there's 17 pages of them. 
Uh, note, we get about 10 to 11 in a lot of episodes. So I'm like, okay, so we're good. We're good here. And I, I foolishly didn't think that we had enough. You uh, fool. The, I was a fool. fool. So uh, <laughs> I think we're going to potentially have two episodes and we'll have this episode. Sacred Project 4. Next time. Uh, and then we'll do more of this. And then by then, maybe there'll be more wobs and then we'll just do more wobs. <laughs> But yeah, uh, the Brandon interview is was was very very well watched. Fifty four thousand views. Wow! In in a month, as opposed to for our previous Brandon episode two years ago, got seventy two thousand views. So thank you all for listening. Wow, cool. Yeah, that's fun. We'll see you in three years for another one, probably. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe maybe it will be maybe two. Eventually. Who knows? Yeah. So we'll have to start scheduling now to be able I to mean, yeah. brand in yes. two years. True, yeah, yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He is he is a busy, busy, busy man. Uh, <laughs> I, I did actually get messages. It's like, hey, can you help me get Brandon on to my show? I'm like, I I would uh if yeah, I knew that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Can you can can you help us get him on our show? <laughs> it, it was a process. Process. <laughs> With that fun introduction, uh, we're promptly going to not do uh, the words of Brandon from the interview because there's a few words <laughs> of Brandon from the Tampa Comic Con. Tampa Bay. Yeah, yeah. Tampa Bay Comic Con. There's a few wobs. We're just going to crank those out first because that's what <laughs> happened most recently and then then we'll get to those so ian do you want to start us up with red the wind runner oh and we got to go to wob mode we okay now we're in wob mode sorry before we begin uh spoiler warning for uh tress yumi and every other cosmere thing yeah no uh, secret project four because that, that's that's no not secret yet. project four no uh stormlight five reading spoilers no. how about that cool all right to the wob mode Oh, I did that in mob mode, so all right. We've been in mob mode. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, start us off. Okay, so Red the Windrunner asks in paraphrased form, uh, because we don't have audio for this. Yep. We have now seen Midnight Essence on Lumar and as part of the Unmade on Roshar. Should we assume that all the other Unmade have connection to Odium's other conquests, like maybe Sianat and Ambition? Brandon. Midnight Essence is more like light weaving in that multiple magic systems will reach the same conclusion. When something is done to the magic to corrupt it, it becomes like Midnight Essence. So while there are similarities between the two and they work the same, they may not have the same point of origin. Red. So there is no meaningful connection between Skiana and Ambition? Brennan, you weren't going to let me off the hook. You are theorizing in a very interesting direction. Rafa. Huh. When something is done to the magic to corrupt it, oh, good. it becomes like Midnight Essence. This makes sense to me. The Aethers are supposed to represent like primal like <laughs> elements of the Cosmere. Midnight Essence is one of those. Yeah, it's going to come about a bunch of different ways. That that part makes sense. That that part I understand. Uh, and that's also consistent with like things that we talked about in the black smoke episode the corruption of magic is interesting becomes like midnight essence so because because that to me almost implies that midnight essence or midnight essences don't exist like naturally in the world they are a byproduct of of like like corruption or co-opting of investiture that's really weird to me in my opinion i don't know oh yeah yeah i it's almost like maybe this is silly but it's sort of like the concept of of rot is sure. there's only so many different forms that can take sure you know it's like it's always going to kind of look the same at least to the surface i don't know like it makes sense to me like the concept of there, there's nothing like bizarre or shocking that oh all corrupted magic kind of does the same thing that sure 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 he's it's a, he's he's decided this is a principle now it's not like something that can be is like contradictory to anything we know about it either or about stuff mm -hmm. 
I don't know. Just like, I'm like, oh, cool. It's like carcinization. Everything becomes crabs, except, um, you know, just like everything becomes midnight essence if in a certain, like the, if the right process has happened. I, I, I do have a layman question though. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, why, why is ambition referenced in this question? I, I don't, don't know. I have why. no Who idea. Knows? Oh, okay. No. I was thinking, I was no, just no, like no, no, not no. getting the obvious connection here. It's, it's not, it's not obvious, but I, but I have some ideas. I don't, obviously okay. I don't know like where red is coming from, but, uh, some of the ideas that are being played with in this question is that ambition also has a history of not necessarily corrupting investiture although we do see you know ambition showing up on scadrio and like um... ambition oh i fully okay <laughs> no, like, no, wait no. what <laughs> okay yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 sorry um i can 100 percent the other way um <laughs> okay the crux of the question is hey are unmade kind of side effects or byproducts of Odium's conquests. Mm-hmm. And one of the shards that Odium has splintered is Oh, okay, ambition. sure. Oh. Right. Yeah, okay. And so the question fine. is getting at, hey, is ja, is ja not kind of that, right? Yeah. Uh, because we do see, like, we, we don't know that for a fact, but I, I guess I wouldn't describe Janet as ambitious. Yeah, but it doesn't quite fit for me, I don't think. She is like going her own way a little bit with these with these corrupted sprites. To be honest, it, it, autonomy would make all worse sense. <laughs> well, isn't like like yeah. looking at looking at the copper mine page and like how like she's so tied to Threnody is like are they trying to make like the comparison between the corrupted radiant sprint and like the, the spirit? The shades. The shades, uh, like maybe that's the maybe that's the link they were trying to draw. Like my someone question, who's in control of the spirit making. That makes sense. I don't know where the foundation for this question <laughs> came from. Because like, yeah. what's the connection between Lumar and Odium's conquests? True. <laughs> this person is playing five D chess. That's the <laughs> <Yes>. question. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it is a very interesting theory, though, mm-hmm. that the unmade come from s- potentially such far reaching points in the Cosmere and have converged on Roshar. Like, that's not a theory I've seen before. Um, it's not new. Um, and it and it was certainly reinforced by Rhythm of War, where we saw Rabonio try to unmake the sibling. Sure. By pumping pumping them full of void light, essentially. Sure. Um, and so, but but the idea has been around that Odium has like gone around the Cosmere and like collected these powerful entities that he has then unmade by pump, pumping them full of his investiture uh, until he eventually finds his way here on Roshar. That'd be pretty cool. To the next question. That's a name. Yeah, you want to try and pronounce that one? <laughs> Dyratron. Yeah. Dyratron. I just say Detron. Sure. Asks, Maybe. in Dawn Shard, when the reason is looking at the mural, it's uh, it's an exploding sun into four pieces, and then each one of them broken into four more. Based on this, would it be reasonable to assume four shards of similar intent could be able to to form like a super shard without the issues say Z is encountering. For example, say honor, valor, mercy, and uh, the last maybe unknown shard like wisdom or something like that. And uh, Brandon says that this is a correct line of theorizing. So there's four quarters. Yeah. Um, Ruin is up in- here. Ruin is up here. And what's the preservations down here? down here they're completely like opposite ends of the pie um, <laughs> like i don't know if that's necessarily true though <laughs> that's that's me that's me like that's, just throwing it based on this answer that, like, yeah yeah sure like, yeah. yeah i was just like okay so like that makes sense like if there are things that go well together there are things that don't go well together and we're kind of like maybe saza is like the absolute worst like yeah. you know just we, it i've frozen with sounds, indecision i can't do anything yeah mm-hmm. it also just sounds like an equilibrium problem to an extent say that has two things that do not fit in harmony <laughs> um, <laughs> um 
And like, that's why he's having such problems. But if you did take things that did fit together, like similar to like a chemical equation, right? And um, had them actually balanced out, then they would just work together instead of like constantly moving back and forth in different directions. If you were to put together, for example, odium and ambition together, uh, they wouldn't necessarily like cancel each other out they might help like draw or or maybe not necessarily like help each other but they wouldn't hinder each other in that same way yeah i see it more like uh vector mechanics where it's like reserve ruin and preservation are like direct opposites like the the net movement is zero but like if you have like honor pointing this direction valor pointing this direction well, like that just neutrals it out into like you're still going mostly in one direction. You're still going somewhere. Sure. Yeah. You're still going somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I guess I always thought that ruin and preservation would be like in similar shard quadrants, yeah. though. That's that that's kind of like maybe, but Sezed definitely felt oh these belong together and we know that ruin and preservation were like especially drawn to each other because they were so opposite it's like maybe they're on these different quadrants but i don't think that has to be true necessarily it, yeah. it's like it's possible and i'm so just like thinking back aspect. to yeah yeah magnetic aspect for sure yeah I, i'm thinking back to wob's past like stardic categorization Mm -hmm. schemes have been a subject of discussion for a very long time like particularly like once like oh there's 16 shards there's 16 medals like uh, like yeah patterns brennan's answer in the past was that like eh, like maybe maybe not like shards aren't necessarily like in a pattern like the alimentic medals per se but that was all sure before we though. knew 15 of 16 shards. And the mm. knew about Don shards at all, right? The, yeah. the Muro is a really compelling thing, right? Mm-hmm. The yeah. idea that, hey, Adonalsium, four Don shards, and then four shards associated with each one of those, yeah. which is not like the canonical explanation of what is going on there. We don't know technically what this Muro is depicting, but it sure seems like that's what it's depicting. Yeah. Yeah. But only knowing one Don Shard. That does not help for name. this at all. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not helpful. We we need like at least two or three Don Shards, and then I think we can get mm-hmm. somewhere. Yeah. But I was I was speaking with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago, and it it occurred to me, not for the first time, that the kind of like over the history of this fandom and, and the Cosmere saga. A lot of what we have been doing in like the theorizing space uh, has been kind of trying to figure out the shards, right? Because yep. we started off with, you know, a handful mm-hmm. uh, at the beginning. And then we, we got a couple more and then we got Rhythm of War and that dumped four additional ones uh, to the point where we're almost done, right? We're only missing one shard. One shard. But now we have the Dawn shards to play with. Yep. And then so there, there's this exactly, you know, obviously there's only four instead of 16, but like it's exactly the same journey. Like, ah, oh, we have so little, but we can extrapolate so much based on so little data. Such a crazy novella where it's just like, oh, I didn't even realize there were these toys to play with in the Cosmere mechanics. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. We're nowhere close, actually. Cool. From our friend Daretron or Diretron again. If a hemallergic spike loses its charge, does that mean the remaining part of the person's soul trapped will move on to the beyond? Brandon says, yep. A little weird, but that does it's not problematic, I think. Good to right? know that part of the person's soul isn't just like stuck forevermore doing nothing in the cognitive realm and just never able to move on. Presumably yeah. not do anything either because it's such a small part of the soul. So, like, this makes me wonder about, like, the the new spikes, the new method for creating spikes we see in Lost Metal. Um, mm. Does that have any impact on, like, your soul in terms of, like, when you eventually die, yeah. are you going to be missing pieces? For sure. Mm. 
I wonder I mean, if you be missing enough pieces of your soul that for some reason you can't then move on to the beyond. Thinking of secret history. It's like if Marsh was to die, but all of his spikes remained like active somehow. And he, he's just missing so many parts of his soul yeah. at this point. Yeah. Well, like what? He's not missing any parts of his soul. He just has a whole oh. bunch of parts tacked on. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I'm thinking of it the wrong way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was also thinking about the Coloss, but they are they are in the same boat, right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like if the fragment that's in a spike can move on, even if like only a small part is left and all the rest is in spikes, that one part can move on. Yeah. I don't think yeah, size yeah. Yeah. matters for that. Yeah. Probably. It's not a Horcrux situation. <laughs> Probably. All right. That's all we got for Tampa. So let's get on to Brandon interview questions. So I'll start with uh, Matt asking about in the Lost Metal, you had Marasi ultimately reject Kelsier's offer of joining the Ghostbloods. And I think that's a decision we've seen some division on with the fans. So I'm curious, what's your analysis and thoughts on that? Because it was an interesting and fun character choice. And Brandon says there was division among beta readers on it. He expected this. And Brandon just thought that this wasn't a good place for her. Marasi, you know, wanted to change the world. And how do I change the world? It, it was all about her arc, really. And should she be doing more? You know, the ghost bloods are kind of a fit. But then Brandon says, Kelsey is just a terrible match to Marasi. Like personality wise, you know, Kelsey is about the shadows. He believes that if all the information were known, it would be worse. Uh, he can share it with a small group. But that's antithetical to Marasi, where we want society to be better as a whole. And so Brandon decided that's a really bad place for her. And so Marasi did need a place. And so Brandon put her to in this political spot. So that's that's why he did that, because Marasi turned down uh, the ghost bloods. Brandon also just name drops, you know, era three is called Mistborn Ghost Floods. You know, <sighs> no big deal. <laughs> um, and <sighs> so... There, there's there's presumably going to be some ghost one stuff in there. You think? Mm. So, I don't think so. It's a it's a red herring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a misnomer. So I, I do think this makes uh, a lot of sense with uh, mm -hmm. Marasi's arc. Like Ichi, yeah. Ichi isn't really about the shadows, even though I want to see some POV ghost blood characters. I would love to see more Marasi after um, Era Two, and I would love to see her like in the Ghost Bloods more. But yeah, she she does not fit in that organization at all. Like she is so much more about changing the structures of society so it stands on its own feet yeah. in a non-corrupt good way. And the ghost bloods are all about deceitful corruption in the background to make it how they want it to be. <laughs> like, yeah. It's the it, complete like, opposite. Yeah. Like <sighs> in, in like isolation, it's like, yes, 100%. Like, this makes sense for Marasi's character. It's just rough that it's like the joining the ghost blood fake out the second book in a row. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, like, yes, this character choice makes sense. Did you have to put Marasi in that situation? <laughs> Could you have chosen a different character for that? In Era 2, I don't know. Like, like it makes sense for Marasi to be in that role and like, she can't join because it doesn't make sense for her character but it's well, just like downsides to that too right because like that was his whole like wrap up was like hey listen even if she joined i'm skipping decades right away you wouldn't have seen yep. her anyway so it's kind of like if there was a character who said yes it's like i feel like there's a there's a downside there to people getting really excited about like True. oh my god we're gonna see her in the ghost bloods and the next book is just not that because she's dead, <laughs> she's dead. we're gonna do new characters now in the ghost bloods um well i imagine there'll be you know she has they, they, they know that time dilation thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I kind of get the them. impression that, like, if someone joins the Ghost Bloods, we're probably going to keep seeing them because mm. they seem to have so many, like, agey, timey, wimey shenanigans yeah. going on. It's like yeah. breath. Like, like get to the third height, fifth heightening, fifth, fifth heightening, heightening. Gets, gets you agelessness. Yeah. 
they have lots of investiture because that's their whole thing. Mm-hmm. But it does seem Era 3 is going to be different characters, just like it, they weren't going to be the focus anyway. Of But, but wouldn't old stateswoman Marasi, who wouldn't she that mm-hmm. be so great as a character in Era 3? Mm-hmm. Like if if the timing works out. Give me that, Brandon, because I need that in my <laughs> yeah. life of Grandma yeah. Marasi. I mean, it what, would be a lot of 26? fun. It, at the like ish like late oh, 20s shots. if it's 60 plus years it, she should only be like 80 <laughs> she could come out of retirement she, she has cadmium like, you know yeah or it depends Someone's on there. like the like like there's lots of uh, there's lots of politicians who are like in it for life like a, she, yeah. A, yeah. actively active politician stateswoman yeah. marasi mm-hmm. she's she's president pro tempore of the senate she'll be there until she dies <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe maybe give her a health medallion sure her. yeah you, you know mm-hmm. something like that any thoughts on mistborn ghost bloods it, it's, so it's pretty exciting oh, but, so it is it, but it's like it's still so far in the future that i'm like i don't want to i don't want to be hype about that <laughs> true, yet. true i'm not ready no I'll you gotta you gotta you gotta contain this fire otherwise it's gonna burn down the forest mm-hmm. mm. I'm sure we'll do an Era 3 predictions episode. Jumping off the um, the hype, though, uh, that Ian was saying, I don't want to get too hyped for it in case I'm then let down by it, because that's exactly what happened for me with Lost Metal, is mm. I was so hyped for the book that I didn't like it very much. <laughs> it, it was like really low tier yeah. for me. So I like I'm super excited by hearing these things, but I'm trying so hard to stay restrained and like not get expectations too high just in case for some reason they don't like Brandon doesn't meet them. I will say like I am more excited for Era 3 being written back to back to back. Yes. So yes. hopefully the narrative arc is a bit more even. Yeah. And not- yeah wildly it's, different between <laughs> each book. And, and not, yeah. o- not only that, but Era 3, formerly Era 2, has been, you know, outlined-ish Plan. Plan. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For, for a long time. Because this is a trilogy of trilogies. Era 3 is the middle trilogy. Uh, and Era 2 is an aberration uh, that wasn't <laughs> planned. So. It's, the, it's the bastard child. Yeah. The distant so. cousin. Look, I loved the ghost blood part of Lost Metal, so give me just all of that, and then like yeah. I think it'll be pretty good <laughs> to me. Yeah. But. yeah, I am sympathetic towards people who are not necessarily in the Cosmere for the Cosmere, but I am. That's that's <laughs> so my jam. <laughs> I'm yeah. into it. <laughs> yeah, like like individual stories are not like Sixth of the Dusk. Well, maybe Sixth of the Dusk is not the best example, but <laughs> like. Not a good example. <laughs> <laughs> but like shadows for silence true. in the forests of hell right yeah, yeah. nice kind of contained or like era one or el- although yeah. there's a lot of shard stuff in era one yeah, yeah um so like i like those for what they are but give me give me some romantic stuff give me some crossover some world hoppers some spiritual mumbo jumbo and it's it's just it amplifies everything else for me so much mm-hmm. I'm I'm ready for Cosmere crossovers. Gloves fully off. And Brandon said <sighs> the gloves were off for Lost Metal, and he's correct. It it was, but like yeah. starting a series that way, like this is the era where it's it's gonna get really overlappy yeah. and crazy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm that's what I've been here for since 2008 with Hero of Ages. You know, I'm in. Well, it's good to have those expectations like going in. I yes, think like for sure. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, I think like that's probably in my opinion the the biggest like reaction to Lost Metal is not because necessarily it's causing a crossover city, but because it was the fourth in a book yeah, or fourth, sure. fourth book in a series that Absolutely. didn't do it. And I'm like, this is, maybe there's been some like rough like transition, but it is a transition and now we're just going to go into the next section now and now it's you get to decide if this is your jam or not yeah. there's, I, I don't th- i don't think there's going to be much more of that like um a tone tone switching or just yeah. like uh, yeah yeah uh, accidentally i thought this was one thing but it turned out to be mcu da, 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 and i'm like okay well now now's your stepping off point i guess yeah. it's uh yeah <laughs> lost, that's, lost that's metals, fine. like that's fine okay was it your jam or was it not okay like there you go <sighs> <laughs> And Lost Metal still worked in the way that if you hadn't read yeah. 
uh, like Elantris or the Empress Soul. That didn't matter. Like it was just like another character that was mysterious. And then you could find out that, oh, that's actually another book she's in. You yeah. can go read that now. Yeah. And it's just mm -hmm. it is kind of cool that we are getting to the point that Brandon has still kind of designed it in a way where there are so many different pathways you can take to get between books now. Like there isn't really any one reading order anymore. I think everyone secretly wants to say the best reading order is the order <laughs> I did it in. Yes, and of everyone course, else yes. should do that. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Publication <laughs> order is superior to everything else. Oh, it, I don't because... think that's a good way to read air too. <laughs> that's, that's not optimal. <laughs> yeah. Just take a I... take a six year break after Bands of Morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You have to do it in real time, of course. <laughs> it's the it it uh, it replicates the uh, the anticipation, right? You really got to think, man. The next book's gonna have so many medallions that nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can't explore well, something continent, right, guys? Malwish. <laughs> so We're going pain. to Malwish. Yeah, it looks so pained. <laughs> yeah. And like the southern planet, it's on the other side of the planet, not right over there. <laughs> like, <laughs> <miles away. laughs> you know what, well, guys? Like, you guys should actually have not read like these books again in the six years because I, I think it made my lost metal experience better. Like, I just <laughs> forgot <laughs> stuff and I was true. just like, yeah, this is awesome. This yeah. actually was fine. I'm Spanish kind of with was Jeff, trolling but... you all along with like asking yeah. you to reread it. <laughs> <sighs> it's okay we suffered along with you though <laughs> yes yes indeed we're always ready to talk about that map that world's the stage uh, of the world's map. <laughs> every day i am, we're I ready. am ready for say Zed to get splintered and someone else to pick up the shards and go let me fix this planet <laughs> is it true i'm 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 so ready to just for discord like era three is gonna be hype it's gonna be super cool uh so you know what i'm gonna let myself get hyped because i think this is gonna be more of the epic bigger books like none of these smaller books like yeah. era one era two right we're gonna get more era one-ish size things yeah that's what i want it's gonna it's be good. good stuff yeah it's gonna be good yes you want to do the next one? Yes. So we switched Eric and I because the question directly after this is actually one that um, I wrote up to be put in, yeah. uh, which jumps off something Ian mentioned earlier uh, about how this is a very similar plot line to what happens in Rhythm of War with Shalan, where she's sort of in the Ghost Bloods, but then rejects the organization. And I too was kind of disappointed with what Mar uh, Marisai did simply because we had literally just had the exact same thing happen in the previously published book. And I was curious whether that was intentional or whether Brandon wanted to explore it in a different way. His response was, no, this was just the individual characters and what they needed. In my head, Marisai walking away was an offer is very different to Shalon declaring war. There will be lots of fun with that in upcoming books. Let's just say that. Great. Upcoming books. Plural. Book plural, plural books. Not just Stormlight yeah, 5. It's such an interesting situation. If there had been like a couple books in between, I don't think it. we would even be like, thinking of this as a, pot no, a absolutely. potential issue yep. because they were so close together. And because Marasi is at the end of her series, Shalon still has one slash six books to go. <laughs> or anywhere in between. Anywhere in or between. Anywhere in between. <laughs> we don't know if she's going to die. Yeah, Anyone can die. Anyone can die. Um, Especially book five, maybe. Yeah. So like I, I can see it's like in Brandon's head, these being entirely different things, even though on the surface level, like they look the same. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting the way he phrases it as Marisai walking away from an offer and then Shalon declaring war, because that is exactly what it is. But that's mm -hmm. not how I was thinking about it. Like, I was just thinking of them both rejecting the offer from mm. the Ghost Bloods. And I think you're right, Ian, if there were other books in between, that I think that difference would have been much 
more obvious and it wouldn't have just seemed like, oh, they're both rejecting the ghost bloods. So it's like, oh no, Marisa is turning them down, but like they're not going to be at each other's throats. Whereas Shalon is very much uh, trying to bring the organization yeah. down. Yeah. And, and Marcy does say, I believe, uh, in that epilogue that, hey, I don't want to work with you, but if you want to, like, help me out, like, if you mm. were to provide information to the government and the police, I will happily take it. Yeah. Yeah, I think she said that she was willing to work with them yeah. on occasion. It, she just didn't want to join and be part of the organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I feel like they would have, like, a acceptable working relationship where I was like, Okay, this is ghost blood contact yeah. that we have that is, you know, not a ghost blood, but is someone we can work with and mm. utilize. Yes. Kelsey would probably think of it that way. She's not privy to all of the secrets of the organization, <clears throat> but like they know like she can be trusted. Yeah. To work with. Yeah. I, I think it's a little bit like uh, Batman and Commissioner Gordon type sure. of situation. Yeah. 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 Gordon is not exactly that, but there is this, hey, they're doing their own thing in very different ways, but occasionally they are they are happy to work together. They, they have a working agreement that's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so not going to ask too Mar many questions about what Batman Mar does. Marcy goes on top of the building and, and just like this uh, uh, interlocking triangles <laughs> light up in the, in the moonless Scadrian sky. Perfect. <laughs> and and Kelsier, Kelsier swoops in uh, on, without his alimantic powers. Without, yeah, yeah, he's actually on an airship. Um, Perfect. You uh, see, with with like his uh, uh, original mist cloak flaring dramatically behind him. <laughs> Make fan art of that, guys. <laughs> uh, that thing must I, be so frayed at this point. Like, I hope he knows how to sew. There's got to be a uh, he he has uh, uh, um, uh, a shy with the repair soul stamp. Oh, Easy. that's true. Good point. Yeah. That's why he, that's why he has to go get shy back. Right? Actually, that, that's how she got recruited. It was not the whole <laughs> hey, you might be able to turn into an Elantrian thing. It's like you can fix my mist cloak. <laughs> they don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I also think, like from Brandon's point of view, I can see why this is not an issue or like because it's yeah. like to him it's obvious first i bring up the roshar ghost bloods we get a vibe from them now i'm going to bring up the skadrian ghost bloods and then the next i'm going to actually go inside the ghost blood so for him it's sort of like sure. like you know it's sort of like uh yeah like it doesn't really matter to him if they join or not because it's like he already he already has had in mind for apparently quite a long time like what he was going to do with the ghost bloods anyway sure. so it's sort of like you guys are getting your answers it's like you know for him he yeah. doesn't feel the pressure of like tell us about the ghost bloods yeah you yeah know? that's probably yeah. exactly he, it. he sees the full picture which mm -hmm. skews like yeah his perspective this doesn't feel it's like yeah it's yeah. Pat, Pat, you'll get ghost blood soon. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. It's okay. Uh, Is it, well, because it's like, I think also, I think like a lot of readers like see it as like, they rejected the ghost bloods and now I don't get to know about the ghost bloods. We could have learned about the ghost bloods. That was never going to happen, guys. Like, what are you guys talking about? We Every learned so much, even from like characters on the outside yeah. or like from the narrative, like, like perspective, like we get information in third person. Uh, like, come on. We were always, we're always going to get this amount of ghost bloods at this point, And we're going to get more ghost bloods when it's relevant. So yeah. I think also with the, um, the Skager and Gross Bloods, the other characters that we were given with them, I think people did latch onto them and want to see more of them. And now we don't necessarily have that contingency that we will. Like they might turn up in Era 3, and I think they probably will. I think that's why Brandon's introduced yeah. them. Yeah. But maybe they won't. And that would be a bit of a bummer. I fully expect Shy is going to show up. Shy's got to uh, show up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She she is she is a main character of another series. Uh I think it's likely that we'll see Twin Soul as well. Like there's Aether Planet um, stuff, right? Like he's Aether Planet into stuff, that, right? He is our like connection to that. He has a and destiny. He has like a protagonist plot. He right. he has a protagonist and plot somewhere. Yeah. Chaos like Elantris. he was like like she's one of the main characters of Elantris too, I believe. Yep, that's mm -hmm. still weird. <laughs> that's, she, that's she, crazy. and uh, and her brother. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
Dayorn? Dayorn? Dayorn. Dayorn and I think Edaim is Adaim. supposed to be also be a viewpoint character yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, all three of them. Yeah. And the fact that we meet Eatil's brother as well. Like all of these characters seem really significant. They're not yeah. one book characters, but I can see the kind of nervousness of, oh, hey, we've maybe moved away from these characters if we're not going to stay with the organization right now. Yeah. But I think they're coming back. I, th I think we're going to um, see more of them. A ghost blood agent POV. That's what I want. Like in that, that's going to, that's going to be great. Like it's going to be Eric, really cool. But Eric, we had all of those Shalon POVs. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> You're banned too. <laughs> cool. Ian, let's go to the next one. We're making absolutely awful time, but that's, that's fine. We're having good discussion. We'll right? speed up. Yeah. We'll speed up. Yeah. 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 Sex one is Veronica. We only know the people of Kamashi as having investiture from virtuosity. Why does their investiture seem to be split into the two streams of power known as Hyon? Is this something unique to virtuosity as a shard, or just how it happens to manifest on Kamashi? Brandon, yes. This will be a theme you will see wherever virtuosity is involved. So yeah. Hmm. Interesting. This will be a theme. There is a sub-theme to this in the Cosmere, the push and pull. The opposites should be echoing through the magic systems. It is more expressed in virtuosity than the others, but do keep in mind that the yin-yang sort of thing is there in the Cosmere, as well in the general magic system. But more pronounced with virtuosity, shall we say. That is so fascinating to me. Yeah, and, and also the spirits went into two chunks, right? When they yeah. were manifest mm -hmm. as devices. Yeah. So just as a reminder for the listeners. It, it, it's this... super interesting. Like, I, I like it with, like, the artsy shard. Like, it's, for some mm. reason, that makes a lot of sense to me. Like, I still just like virtuosity being the art shard. More artsy than the other ones. Oh, it makes so much sense to me, though. Like, virtuoso. Yeah. Virtuoso. It's like, I, I preferred, like, virtuosity as, like, technical mastery of a skill like generally art sure like I, I don't like virtuosity being the art shard for the same reason i don't like invention being the science shard sure okay. i feel like these yeah, are okay. general across sure yeah okay. the shards it's like no like and like art is like foundational to the human experience there is not like one shard that does that mm -mm. i mean yes but like other shards, other intents are like the whole idea is that all of the shards are expressed in all people to an extent, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone has some sense of honor. Everyone has a sense of preservation. Everyone changes and induces change uh, through ruin and things like that. So I don't think the fundamentality of, of art and artistic expression are an argument for that. Regardless, well, <laughs> oh, I have one more. Okay. It's like, to me, like invention has m just as much to do with art as like being a virtuoso of something. Sure. Well, here, here's like here's me coming at this question. Mm -hmm. I'll be the I'll be the the dummy here. You're, um, you're the audience stand in Shannon today. <laughs> I, I love playing that role because I, I don't have to pretend like I know anything. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Okay, this is like talking about two streams within one shard, within yep. one magic system, within one intent. Okay, mm. what are the two streams of vir virtuosity? Like, what actually are the two distinct things in the first place? Like, it's sort of like, oh, we're talking about like this, like we like we know what these two opposing things are, like these two push and pull within virtuosity. What are they? Oh, we don't know. <laughs> Okay, so we just like there's gonna no, be that's, something. That's that's not that's not what we're like. We're we're just no. Um, okay, um, there's two of them though for sure. <laughs> there's two. There's two yeah. like sub intents within the main intent, and I'm like, yeah. uh, I don't. Know. And and I think a good question here is, what does it mean? Like, what does a pull look in the context of virtuosity, and what does push look like in the context of virtuosity? Um, well because like what came to mind with like this this specific thing is like technical mastery and art together like it's sort of like sure. it, like it has to be both like so i'm like okay i can see that like it has to be both like technically very 
almost mathematical, like that kind of precision. Mm, and also sure. it needs to be visually appealing or appealing in some other way that we would could that people Study. would look at it and say, this is art, you know, like so I'm like, math, okay, that beauty aspect, maybe. Yeah. It, it like you're going to make a fractal. You're going to make a, you know, something, something like that. Mm. And, and that to a large extent is the story of the book, yeah. right? We meet yeah, painter the and, and we meet yeah. Yumi. And when they like, uh, we, we see this a lot more, I think, when Painter goes over to Yuma's side of things uh, than, than the other way around. Because like she paints a little bit, but doesn't do much with that. Uh, yeah. But there's a lot of a lot of dialogue, a lot of back and forth in the book about, you know, what is art? Is art something inherent to you that you just have? Or is it, you know, rote memorization almost and mm -hmm. practice? Mm -hmm. So I am I am fully on board with, you know, the my push little... and pull of virtuosity being yeah. something along those lines with them because i'm thinking also like oh are we like are we all kind of like instinctively getting that maybe not i'm trying to think of like other shards and like what would those even be um i immediately like started this doesn't make any sense we don't know what those are and then my brain started immediately coming up with more <laughs> like i was just like oh like what would that even look like with honor and then i'm like the storm father is constantly like, you know, going back and forth in conflict. I'm just like, what's going on in his head? Like maybe that's where we could find a, a push and pull in like his development, mm -hmm. which is like, oh, this is a very interesting concept. This is throwing me. The idea that there's like two opposing sub intents within every major intent. I'm like, <sighs> I would say complementary, not opposing. Well, yeah. uh, complementary like and opposing. Yeah. Like it's it's both. It's like they're both yeah. opposites, but they also go together. It's you, it's yeah. both. Yeah. Or it's yeah. like it's like some are more aligned than others. Yeah. So like that's why like push and pull like is like most obvious with virtuosity, perhaps because like those like potential sub intents are like more contradictory than they are in like some other arts. I don't. I do want to mention that like. The other like main place we see pushing and pulling like is allomancy, which is like preservation's magic. Yeah, that is true. We don't necessarily see that in ferrochemy or hemology, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily a, a metallic arts thing. Um, out in hemology, you could make some art weird argument about storing and tapping, though. <laughs> kind of. I, I, I guess you could, but but so the thing is, I, I so I, I also kept trying to like think of other shards where we might have seen something like this, and I like my brain always goes not to push and pull, but to internal and external like properties. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Which which is not what this is talking about, right? Uh, push and pull in allomancy, at least, are separate categorizations from internal and external. Um, and so I, I think you could also make the argument that uh, tapping and storing is that instead of mm -hmm. pushing. But, but regardless, maybe you can make the argument, maybe you can't, but it's the argument is clear in, in allomancy. It's interesting to see how things have evolved over time from going from Mistborn where it seemed so clear that it was, this was an allomancy thing or like this was a Mistborn thing <laughs> to these concepts just becoming more, not vague, but like less specific and across the Cosmere. And like we've still seen it with light weaving. We were talking before. Yeah, yeah foundational um about with like the midnight essence as well it's like these things aren't necessarily from one shard they're different manifestations yeah. of an idea that goes through a shard yeah i mean we see a ton of that in uh warbreaker right we we thought sure. in uh like command intent and command were, yeah, yeah, yeah yes yes were a warbreaker thing and no that was just actually warbreaker doesn't have a magic system <laughs> it's just using fundamentals <laughs> yeah this actually reminds me a lot of uh, a question that I've kind of had in the back of my mind for Brandon, because uh, Veronica asks about like whether it's specific to Kamashi or whether it's specific to the Shard. And I've always had this idea, I remember when we were talking about Warbreaker oh, yeah. on a different episode, of whether if a different Shard had invested on analysis, would it have resulted still in breath and awakening or would it have resulted in a different magic system and i think this kind of answers that as well 
because this answer seems to be saying, no, it's to do with virtuosity. It's not to do with where they are. I don't think it's as simple as that. Because like the planet does play a role. Nalthus is a hard example because it's, th- there are a lot of like clear pieces, like mm. schedule, like the metal based magic. It's like See, any chart that invests. Because it's a schedule is a bad example I, because Ruin Infestation yeah. made it. Yeah. If you yeah. ignore that part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ignore like, that what part. If there was a planet where they, that what if they made a planet that didn't have metal? What would happen? Yeah, it's more like we know the planet plays some sort of role. Yeah, yeah. So it's like so like the bifurcation of investiture on Kamashi. Like that's not a Kamashi thing. That's a yeah. virtuosity thing. Mm-hmm. But like Ion, I think is a like in like mm-hmm. that form. Like yeah. is a Kamashi thing. Yeah, like so, like elsewhere, way, virtuosity sure. will like still have that bifurcation, but it won't manifest like ion and spirits. This is which makes me wonder because there's the other planet that they're looking at. Mm-hmm. If virtuosity was also invested on that planet, how would it manifest there? And I think it'd be similar. And I think you're right in like there is some difference because of the actual planet. I think it'd be similar, but not quite the the high on lines yeah like you you would definitely be able to like see like the connection it's like yes these are two like like they're they're neighbors they're they're siblings yeah shall we say which would be interesting because they were like building the high on lines towards the other planet right Mm -hmm. if both planets ended up being invested by virtuosity but had slightly different um manifestations of it at what point would the high on lines turn into something else when they get to the other planet Gosh, like if it's kind of a bridge between them no i don't think that would happen because what they are doing is they are they are growing the the heon like from komashi to Yuto. so it's not that they are like pulling ambient virtuosity investiture from space and like mm-hmm. building a highway using that they're starting with heon and they are just exp- they're growing it like a tree okay sure. Mm-hmm. sure i have a bit of a different question with this that i wonder if this uh bifurcation with virtuosity is like part of a rationale as to why virtuosity splintered herself like i'm wondering how much this has to do with the virtuosity's vessel and how that vessel expressed virtuosity or how that affected her mind i don't think we have any answers to this but it's an interesting thought (laughs) maybe this would be a very similar situation to say said of trying to have like different things going in different directions and you're trying to hold them at the same time but like maybe a, a less extreme god. yeah yeah mm-hmm. my, maybe my more extreme because it's contained in one thing instead of kind of like almost two things that could split apart oh like like the two powers because like with with say said right there's the two powers but they're intermingling right this it's all, yeah. uh, already intermingled yeah that's, that's yeah true. it's like the difference between two um two atoms coming together to form a molecule versus like the neutrons within the atom bursting apart is what hmm. i'm thinking of like okay, one sure. of these would be a lot more explosive than the other hmm I don't like the idea of a shard being like natively unstable. this unstable. Yeah. 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 I think it sounds so fascinating. <laughs> it, it is pretty cool to have a shard like that, though. I don't know if I like that because like, I feel like that undercuts like virtuosity's decision to splinter herself. Like if it like if it was like an inevitability thing that I like, but like I, I, I do like the idea of like this natural bifurcation of like virtuosities, like investiture, like being a motivating like factor or like a like reason for virtuosity herself to like willingly splinter herself. I, my headcanon was essentially a self-sacrifice. 
-hmm. It was uh, almost like an endowment type of play where virtuosity is like, I can I can reign as a god in this universe, or I can help all sorts of people like express like. I can't say become more virtuous, um, <laughs> like express Virtuosic. the the yeah yeah the 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 the, the virtuosity of their <laughs> of their souls, right? And so she's like, "Here, everyone, get magic paint and also <laughs> ideas." Okay, I'm not uninterested in that. So I, I love how we basically got nothing more of virtuosity in the entire book from the sample chapter. <laughs> No, so it was like it was just nothing. a name drop. So, mm -hmm. Ah, you tease Brandon. It's like and like yeah. the fact we got a shard name like in the secret novel secret Page project. Two, I'm just like whatever. I was yep. not expecting this here, Brandon. Yeah, These were tease. supposed to be like small side stories. <laughs> Maybe we'll learn more in Mistborn Ghost Bloods. <laughs> I mean, probably not. Who knows? Who, Who knows? knows at this point, honestly? But that's the thing, like, we, we just... Are we ever going to get a more background on these other shards, or are we just going to get, like, bits and pieces that are relevant to, like, the splintering? Yeah. I think Brandon is aware of how interested the fandom is in these things. And so, like, I don't expect that he will, like, be able to just pull, like, a book or a series mm. for each one of them out of nowhere. But I expect that other, like, future books that are not Dragonsteel mm. will find places to offer commentary on, on the shards that we don't get an opportunity to, like, explore closely. And, like, and also things like the essays that we've had on the planet mm -hmm. we should just get a book that's like yes. chris's journal chris's yes. journal yeah all yes. of her yes. notes on all of the planets and all of the new things she's collected that'd be great that'd another be great. thing to consider is like dan and isaac potentially writing mm. yeah novels yeah. in the cosmere like yeah. like yeah maybe brennan doesn't write a valor world book maybe dan does like yeah. I, I want to imagine Brandon has a plan with these in some way, yeah. and it's going to be cool because mm -hmm. I think if 16 weren't necessary, then he wouldn't have used 16, mm -hmm. you know, but I am worried that because I want details. Dang yeah. it. Well, I think we'll get details about the vessels and about the shards, but it's going to be very dragon still specific yeah, and maybe. like a lot of the stuff after that is gonna stay like this where it's just like small excerpts cool so our next question comes from me it's you it's, it's me it's a you Maria. it's a me i wanted to talk with brandon about like the parallels and the similarities between uh night blood and the father machine uh in yumi that a lot of people have identified uh, you know, the idea of like consuming souls and bleeding black smoke and yep. they were awakened and there was a command. Yep. I asked uh, among some some rambling, hey, is is awakening like is is that becoming a Cosmere fundamental like light weaving and, and bondsmithing or, or rather I asked it was it awakened using breaths or or is awakening becoming a fundamental? And Brandon says it's the second. It, it's becoming a fundamental term in the Cosmere. Uh, this wouldn't exist in the pre-space age as such. Uh, by space age, there are there's certain terminology that's going between. It's basically with the arcanists and moving to the general population, right? Uh, so the the scientists are coming up with words, and then the general population of the Cosmere is adopting those words. What certain themes in the Cosmere magics mean, and so when Hoyt says this is an awakened machine, his audience understands uh, what that means. It does not necessarily mean breaths awaken, but breaths are one of the main ways that people see things be awakened. You should be noticing those parallels, but that's a term that in the Cosmere is becoming genericized to mean unliving objects 
being given some measure of sentience and even sapience by application of investiture, commands, and these sorts of things. By this point, they've all interacted with various awakened machines of sorts in the future Cosmere. They know what that means. They've talked to an awakened computer, for example. Presumably like the, the computer in trust, right? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, Seslo. Uh, I make happy noises. Uh, and then Brandon does acknowledge that the father machine is, is extremely broken in its ability to just like area of it, like remotely eat people's souls. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Um, just what an AOE. And yeah. says, uh, this is going to be a pretty special circumstance for this book. But yes, it is pretty broken. You wouldn't want this to be... This could be very dangerous in their own hands. Don't expect this to be very commonly used in the Cosmere. Uh, and I asked uh, whether that was a side effect of the magic system that was used to awaken the machine, or was there something else going on? Uh, and Brandon says, it's a side effect of what virtuosity did, and the bit of virtuosity in all the people allowing the machine to have enough of a plausible connection to them to draw upon them. And that's pretty much the end of it. Yep. I don't know how to square that last bit with what happens to Hoyd. With what happens to Hoyd? Because he like something try they try it tries to do something to him and it, that requires a defense mechanism. But I'm like, mm-hmm. does he have bits of virtuosity? Maybe he's just him? connected to virtuosity somehow. Uh, like, like he could just we, be connected to all of the shards somehow. Yeah, from yeah, Yolan, like, that's maybe. been a fairly common theory that like part of what lets Hoyd like pick up all these metric systems is like his like investiture came from he was born when Aiden Alzium was a thing like his innate investor yeah. came from that yeah. mm-hmm. so like, he has a plausible connection to all yeah, the yeah. shards there's also um like his defense mechanism could have also been a little bit like an allergic reaction mm-hmm. right so Odium steals his breaths and he like he goes okay I can't let that happen again let me figure something out and he does something spiritual to himself but that that's not necessarily something that like he knows like he he could be experimenting there right mm-hmm. and then uh he shows up in uh komashi at some point and the machine tries to do like tries to it might have not even tried to like consume him it may have just like reached out to see oh what is this thing and then hoid's spiritual immune system just overreacts and that's funny <laughs> which like this, I love and I, that. that's the, like the overreaction part i think is what happened the father machine isn't still eating people the the ancestors of like the modern day kamashi people True. like yeah for sure were far were far enough away like during like the initial like it, like the father machine had like an ultimate when it summoned to like eat all of these people and then, like, that's no longer a thing. Like, it can't just, like, randomly, like, eat people. Sure, sure. Kind of like Nightblood can get full, so it sounds like the father machine can also get to full capacity. Or has a range. I, yeah. I don't think it's either one of those. I think it's the reason the machine ate all of these people at the beginning was because it had the command to, you know, whatever the command was, but the idea was to make energy for the people. Mm -hmm. And upon awakening, it was like, I don't have enough power to, uh, actually, no, Brandon did talk about that. Uh, Oh, no, 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 that's in the book. Yeah, Yeah, Um, it, it, uh, it didn't have enough power, but it saw the people around it as a fuel source. And so it consumed them. But once that was done, it had enough power. It didn't need to eat any more people because it had the energy required hmm. to, to get the spirits to to accomplish its command. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. To follow its command. So you're saying like the father machine could have eaten everybody if it wanted to. It just like, but but it couldn't have wanted to because that's not what its command was. But yeah, yes, yeah. It doesn't necessarily want. Okay. If it if lot, it needed right? the fuel source to accomplish it, it would have eaten everyone. Yeah. If it. Yeah, 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 but it was like I reached the threshold, and now I can stop. Yeah, I can get. I the think you can make. Good. You can make the argument that hey, if 
they had somehow managed to like steal all the spirits from the machine while the machine is, is somehow still active it could have gone oh i need more power to draw these spirits yeah. back to me i think okay, that's yeah. i think that's correct that's yeah. nightmare fuel I'm oh <laughs> all this is nightmare fuel for sure yeah it, yeah it i'm like literally the is machine, nightmare fuel actually this is such perfect sci-fi horror like stuff for me so i'm like the father machine so ooh, good yeah. stuff um very very interesting so i would say father machine awakened with virtuosity stuff because presumably the father machine <laughs> needs that connection, deep connection with virtuosity mm -hmm. to yeah. eat all these souls. Yeah. Um, and it feels like the people of Komashi might have more virtuosity investiture than like the Alefi might have honors investiture or something like that. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I did kind of get the impression that uh, sort of like how um, the people on Malthus have like this extra vestiture that is breaths. I got the same impression that the people on Komashi have like the extra that is virtuosity. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I can I can get behind that actually. Uh now this is probably a better comparison. I just, Eric I disagrees. <laughs> I like I also like don't think like the Komashi have like an extra bit like breath. Like I think it's more of like normal, like innate investiture levels. Oh, but, yeah. Sorry. I, I meant it as innate. That was just the comparison that comes to mm -hmm. mind. Innate, but like distinctly of virtuosity. Oh, that part I agree with for sure. Yeah. yeah. So we've kind of gotten into like virtuosity and measure investiture is like naturally bifurcated, but like connected to each other. So, like, I wonder if like all, which makes it like easier for like, separate pieces of virtuosity to sync up like that. So it's not just like a plausible connection to virtuosity, but like virtuosity itself like help because like there is this innate disconnect but connection kind of made it happen. Mm. Did that at all make any sense? It was a lot of oh, words. Oh, oh, but <laughs> nope. <laughs> No, <laughs> he, he just you're just saying no. Um, I don't know if it makes sense. I'm just having trouble following. It could have made sense, and maybe I just uh, yeah. it's like what I'm getting is I need to reread this book because <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand half of this. I mean, obviously, uh, what what's really happening is Brandon thought that this this was what we needed to happen for the book to happen, and so that's how it happened. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent, yeah, yeah. Okay. I do like that he's kind of couched it in like it's OP, but it's OP because of this very specific situation that is tied to the shard and the shard's magic. And it's not OP because the people who created it made something OP. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. then it gets harder to not make that thing again in other books. Yeah. And it just starts asking the question of, but why is there not other OP things in the books yeah. now? Um, okay. Why aren't people just awakening machines like that all over the yeah. place? Yeah. Why haven't the machines just taken over everything? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here's another attempt. Okay. So virtuosity's investiture like has this bifurcation. Yep. So like there is a separation, but like it is still one yes. thing. Okay. What if that like inherent like oh yeah, like th these two separate things are still one thing. Okay. Can also applies to like, okay, like this person's soul has a bit of virtuosity and this person's has a soul, bit of virtuosity. Well, and, and both all of these virtuosity people have, is the, like, have the two strands, right? You're not talking about this one is positive, this one is negative. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, like so it's like two, two strands here, <laughs> two strands here. Well, okay. like, well, like virtuosity, like they're all the same. More so, oh, so it's like it's easier to connect them than, like, say, like two people, like who have like preservation in their soul. Okay, because like there all is right. this inherent like disconnected but connected like okay part of it. So I didn't like what you were saying before because I didn't understand it. Now <laughs> I understand. Now you don't now like I, it because you. Now understand. I don't like it because I understand. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't know, like, 
it's a thought. I don't know if this is so. You just for, just throwing it at the wall. Before, yeah, okay. I mean that that's fine, right? You know, say space. Mm-hmm. Before you explained, I thought that you might mean, oh, the father machine was made with the quote unquote positive or the push investiture. The people had the negative investiture, and then as the machine was like making high on. Because high on is is both right. Mm-hmm. It was like mixing mm-hmm. the two. Like I thought that's where you were going, and that was a little bit interesting. I was still gonna disagree with it uh, mm-hmm. because I don't think it works that way. But it would have been more. No, this I don't like. I like that my brain immediately went to it's making DNA. Oh yeah, no absolutely. DNA. Yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. Yes. Yeah, there is the, this part in the swab where Brandon says this is a side effect of what virtuosity did. So uh, presumably that means a splintering. I don't exactly know she what that means in this case. She, she could have been involved in the awakening. Uh, yeah. I think she splintered first though. Yeah, I, know. Yeah, I think it's well to do with before. the splintering. Yeah, and like why she splintered. And so I don't think we can make a lot of progress on figuring out what that is. But Virtuosity's investiture is easier to Voltron. <laughs> that's what I'm getting. That's yeah, yeah. What you, yes, that's it. That, yes. I definitely need answers to what virtuosity did and why. That's that's like I need that. You've you've yeah. teased me, Brandon, and I definitely require this information. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a sentence you can say, you know, at the end of each book, and it's equally <laughs> true. Mm-hmm. Yep. The thing about um, awakening becoming just like a cause me a wide term yep. and you can use other things to awaken. Mm-hmm. Very interesting considering what the ghost bloods are doing on Skadriel, because if you accelerate that to the future, if they're able to get Stormlight off of Bruchar and it becomes just the, the, this investiture that you can use on different planets for different things, you could probably use that to awaken at some point, like they sure, figured yeah. that out. And then you have a very easy source of investiture that is also constantly renewing itself. Like it's kind of never ending. That's going to have really big implications on how much things can be awakened. And it's probably why we're getting things like the spaceship in Tress, because that's going to need so much investiture to awaken it. But now they've just got Rocha. They can easily access it. Which makes me wonder how the Ghost Bloods are doing at this point and whether they're like in the background controlling all of this. Oh, yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Economic empire. Yeah. I'm wondering like how you would awaken with other stuff. Like awakening with Stormlight. Stormlight isn't sticky like Breath is. So you have to like have some way to stick it but like mm. i imagine theoretically that's possible right mm-hmm. like i mean you so can Brennan like, has said it's possible yeah 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 because um, yeah. because like it's the big thing is like has like vasher learned to yeah. awaken with stormlight and it's like he hasn't yet but he can yet being the operative word yeah i i think it's very plausible that where the breath just kind of gets infused into whatever item or, or, well, item you are awakening. Uh, with Stormlight, it might be like, hey, you need to put like a, a, a gem heart, and I, and I pause there for a space uh, specifically, <laughs> like a, a core to the thing that you are awakening, right? Like a golem. Mm-hmm. Oh, like more like Because a golem? Stormlight yeah. is sticky in gems. Yeah. It's not as sticky as breath, but like. Sure, sure. Yeah, which makes me wonder how they're doing this with virtuosity stuff before they have high on. But don't think about that too much. That's that's in the past. This is, this is that fine. Was 1700 years ago. Who that's knows? 1700 years ago. It was a like, different world. I don't I don't know how they did that, but don't think about it too much. <laughs> Although and they like, did technical this skill is far in the future. If this is like space age. Yeah. The father machine was 1700 years in the past. So that was space age. We're so far in the future at this point. Uh, or, or at least Hoyt is telling it to a space age audience. Like maybe it happened true. a bit ago, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. he wouldn't necessarily use those words. I, he yeah. gets on a spaceship. 
Well, yeah, okay, that's that's fair. That, okay, that's a fair <laughs> point here. <laughs> Um, sure and like he references like nicaro and yumi like potentially still being around which mm. easy for yumi to still be around but because yeah, she's yeah. Terrible, but um, yeah i am i am so jess as you were talking i was reminded of when yumi approached the the little machine the prototype like yes. when she was scouting mm-hmm. uh, in spirit form, essentially. One of the scientists, like he had to prime the machine to get it working. And by getting close to like an activation plate, essentially, investiture was pulled from him in what looked like Heon. And so I don't know if that's, well modern day that's what investiture looks like or if that's kind of like a like a faithful recreation of what happened you know back then when the scientists were people and this was actually the first prototype i think it's a natural representation of what would happen because like it's manifesting like that for the same reason high on manifest for the like from spirits like that there's a natural correlation there for me this book is crazy like whoa (laughs) this is a lot of this character focused Mm -hmm. book but lore is like whoa holy crap yeah uh cheyenne said i asks that's veronica stacking in other forms of art like the tv dramas at the end attract the spirits but for some reason painting doesn't could you elaborate on why and the mechanical reasons behind that um, and Brandon's answer is the painting actually would draw them uh, in. He, uh, it seems to like that it's more about the way that their painting is not really clicking with the spirits or with the sentiment of virtuosity. They have a little bit of commodification of art commentary and going in and painting by the numbers. The ultimate thing is that Brandon says it, it does work. Like you, you see it actually work in the book at the very end when Painter uses it to to draw Yumi back. Um, and it's sort of about the it's more about like the mentality or like the, the level of effort or like that kind of thing. It's about they're doing it too much by rote whereas like when we see yumi doing her stacks it's all like very she's a master she's making like every choice like on the fly and it's just like this you can see like mastery at every level of what she's doing and like like the thought and care i'm just like okay yeah um that's that's really what's going on here yeah Yeah. you know what that reminds me of the emperor's soul and like the commentary mm, Shy yeah. had about like the like the mass production of like the oh, like reseal not not real sealers like the oh, rememberers yeah which is, like, yeah the the, the the imperial the empire's forger forgers yeah. like it's like mm. and they just like they there's no art to it like they make the same face every time. Mm. Brandon has thoughts on like what real art is. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shannon, you made the comment before when we were talking about virtuosity about there kind of being two parts to it. Like there's the, you need to have like the technicality skills, but then there's mm-hmm. also like the passion side to it. And it kind of comes across like a lot of the painters are really technically skilled. Painter is really good at drawing bamboo. He doesn't care about drawing bamboo. He just yeah. does it. Mm-hmm. So he's yeah. like missing that like desire and passion to actually do it. And yeah. like when he does draw Yumi, he he has that. And that like that's such an interesting comparison because it's like it's not about that it's bamboo over and over because like what's what's unique and interesting necessarily or novel about stacking rocks over and over like that's not necessarily the problem is that it's bamboo over and over it's that painter thinks bamboo is boring and it gets the job done yeah you know yeah. if he was if he really loved bamboo and was drawing it like with passion all the time and it's just like i'm making the best bamboo i can possibly make every yeah. time like that might have sure. actually been different sure. yeah it's like Ryumi's doing the same thing every every day. It's not like, you know, so it's very interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like, she's like, like I'm making cool rock statues. It's like, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And it, it it's also interesting that because like she's real living the same day every day, mm-hmm. she is literally working with like the same rocks every yeah. time. Every yeah. Day. yeah. And so the reason the spirits are interested in that is like, she's starting with the same base resources, but what she does with those resources is what counts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like out. up until like this, like when you said that, Jesse, like that really like that really got to me. I was like, up until now, I'd, I've been thinking like the bamboo was more of a problem than it than it was, but actually, yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah, like, like it's I don't the passion. Think the content matters. I think it's yeah. the yeah. the intent of the actual yeah. painter. He could have he could have been painting, you know, beautiful vases, like turning every nightmare into you know. Uh, mm-hmm. a gorgeous landscape but it's the same land that is just yep i know how to printing press this thing yeah yeah like, like i, I know love exactly trees i'm gonna make everything a tree because i love trees so yeah. much and that might have actually been different <laughs> it's like the emotional component to yeah yes like he's painting bamboo like but is he creating art yeah every instance like yeah no yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. i mm-hmm. like that and it's good that like it's not like an inconsistency. It's just it's the way they paint. So mm. I yeah. like that. The vibes are wrong for the spirits. I the, really the vibes do like are this wrong. answer. Yeah. The- no, I really like this answer. Like, and I think it, it be, having lost metal come out so soon before this, and like having uh, shy slash moonlight's whole thing about <laughs> the commodification of art conversation in that book. Uh-huh. Like, I'm just like, it, there seems to be a theme of like it actually matters. Uh, yep. 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 Cool. Like so what we are going to do is there's still a bunch more wobs, but I hope you enjoyed this conversation so far on some Yumi stuff. I thought it was pretty cool. I think it was a passionate discussion. <laughs> we we made we made some art. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is art. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to who's that Cosmere character and for you all, you're going to have Secret Project 4 reactions as our next Shardcast episode. And then we're going to have even more words of Brandon. And they're they're pretty cool about dragons and stuff. So stay you bet you better stay tuned for those because they're pretty cool. So let's head on over to who's that Cosmere character? Character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia. Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Ta. You know how the game is played. You send five clues in a character to WTCC at 17 chartcom I read each clue aloud, and these guys have a chance to guess Who's That Cosmere Character? Uh, we're only going to do two today because we're double recording it takes a long long time uh Mm -hmm. so these are both going to be regulars okay so how dare you but you can support our uh patreon and get your who's that cosmic characters read much sooner uh on average for sure but ben gave me these randomly so this first one is from sarcasm fiend on the shards Nice. nice And clue one, this character was last seen on Roshar. <laughs> we're, we're switching it up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> does this mean chronologically in world or chronologically <laughs> publication order? Yeah, I know. Immediately I was breaking automatically people's brains. Publication order. But I am, I'm just not going to take the bait and guess Rosharans, you know? Uh, yeah, okay. Ashunai. <laughs> It's not Ash and I. Demo. It's not Demo. Eotil. Not Eotil. Lift. It's not Lift. Clue two. This character was well acquainted with the protagonist. Was well acquainted? Uh, uh, don't. Wait, this is. <sighs> it, don't read is, into the tense. well acquainted. Don't, don't read. Okay. Don't read the. I added the tense into that and okay, the, don't cool. don't read anything into that. With a protagonist. Yeah. Well, Galadon. I, I, yeah. Not Galadon. I, I will take the very obvious Kelsey of age. <laughs> it's not Kelsey. <sighs> Fine, I'll, I'll join you guys. Bayon. Not Bayon. 
<clears throat> well acquainted with the protagonist. Yeah. Uh, Naj. It's not Naj. I love this. Clue three. Uh, this character's name would be recognized on another planet. Marsh. Not Marsh. Red. Mm. Not Red. <laughs> I like that. That's okay, good. that's <laughs> incredible. That was great. There are multiple reds, though. They might be the same. Felt. It's not felt. I like that, though. That's good. Odium. <laughs> it's not odium. <laughs> good. Good, 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 good. Clue four. This character has traveled a great distance. Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> that's so helpful. Um... <laughs> Azure. Not Azure. Uh, Vasher. <laughs> it's not Vasher. Wow, that kind of rhymed. Can you go through the clues again? Absolutely. This character, this last scene on Rashar, mm -hmm. they're well acquainted with the protagonist. Mm -hmm. uh, their name would be recognized on another planet mm -hmm. uh, and has traveled a great distance. Nightblood. Not Nightblood. I like that. That was my okay. next. Good. Uh, I was yeah. just about to say Nightblood. I was just being polite. And that you was my next. Finished. I'm like, <laughs> thank you. Polite. So polite. That how, what was going on. Well, like she was talking. I, like I was uh, literally about to say Nightblood and she started talking. That was <laughs> my next. It's true. Wow. Wow. It paid off. Paid off. Now, now I have to think of another. <laughs> <laughs> One second. One second. And here, listeners, we see the signature Ian look at the bookcase. He's examining Eerie, what appears to be the Dresden <laughs> files. Could he guess a Dresden oh. character? Oh. <laughs> uh, Stormlight's down there. Stormlight is apparently down there, and he will not necessarily guess a Dresden character, but he might. I'm will leaving this in. <laughs> to the <episode. laughs> I'm not cutting this. <laughs> Will it be Mab? <laughs> I mean, it could be. There is a Mab in Warbreaker. It's true. Oh. Uh, were they last seen on Rashard? Though? Big, big brain, big brain Argent here. I like this. You're ready to do a golf tournament, Evgeny. I, I appreciate I that. <laughs> to, to, like, just, to just, uh, you, like, the, the, like the tone where you're like speaking quietly to to narrate the the is to that, do the is play that by how play. Golf tournaments are, think, are. Isn't that a thing? It could be. It could be golf or nature docs. I think. Yeah, it could yeah, be. nature docs too. Yeah. Okay, nature doc I can buy, but like, kind of this this you know slow, quiet, ponderous. Well, because like they whisper as if like the players can hear. Them. <laughs> yeah. No, they you do. They, that's a thing that happens. I'm why. <laughs> It was like uh, ASMR before ASMR became. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then and then there is soccer, <laughs> where they can probably actually you've, hear them. You've seen the video of like someone swapping the soccer and golf no, announcers, right? Wow. Like, no, but wow. but sent it to me. It was really. Wow. I'll see if I can find it. That was this was a long time ago. Wow. We're very unhinged today, guys. Last scene on Roshar. Last scene on Roshar. That's correct, Ian. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the Pursuer. I don't know. It's not the Pursuer. Clue five. This character is killed by a shard blade. Uh, this is a great clue five because no one is immediately getting it, but I think we could. Yeah. And it's, it's like actually useful too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like there's enough there to put it together. Mm hmm. Wow. I can see why they were last seen on Rashad, though. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. true. I did wonder if that was like a death marker. Yeah. Yeah. Killed by a shard blade. I, I need a reread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do need to reread Stormlight. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to throw a, a weird guess. That is tin. It is tin. Why? <laughs> I reject this. Like, they would be recognizable on another planet because they wouldn't be saying tin in world. Uh, hey, this is, is like that. Eat it. Just bite it. That is just bad. <laughs> uh, I, I reject this tin. sequence. So, 
Sarcasm Fiend also uh, says, I wanted them to guess felt until clue five. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very well good. Done. Well done. What did we say in 10? <laughs> this is wrong. <laughs> Excellent. Put your comments below. Um, Get in the comments. I'm Get right. The comments. Get in the comments. <laughs> Love hashtag that. team Ian or hashtag team Argent will tally up the results in a month. Good. I like that you were so passionate that your camera was literally shaking. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put the camera shake in for the authentic <laughs> experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. This next one is from Dino 13. And Dino 13. Kalu 1. This character has been to the Shattered Plains. I want to guess a dragon That's steel a great character. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to guess that world hopper who talks about soil in that like oh, the ardent party seat. The ardent, yeah. Who's like totally a world hopper. Uh, I'll, 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 was it Al Nock? That sounds right. Yeah, Al Nock. Yeah. I'm I'll guessing Al Nock. Yeah, it's a world hopper. That was the Natan we, we guy. We don't, we don't, know, we don't know for a fact that it's a world hopper, but he explicitly talks about you know s soil. Okay. And uh, I that asked fixed Brandon in the leather about bound, though. No. Okay. All right. Well, it's not because Omnac, it's so. explicitly a, like a, like this is not a Rasharn usage, and it's like you should notice that. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not Alnak, so none of that mattered. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll just skip that. You know, Al Alnak was the ambassador he was speaking yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, who's that, Jess? Okay. Was it Nas? It's not Nas. Uh, Rock. It's not Rock. Moash. It's not Moash. Clue two. This character has been to Kolinar. Oh, that's going to be a field trip. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it was a field trip, actually. <laughs> uh, Shalash. It's not Shalash. Mm -hmm. Has she been? Being to the shattered place. I want to say like there was like some description of like art being destroyed, like on the shattered plant. I don't know. Leshwe. It's not Leshwe. I like oh, that. Good guess. Adeline. It's not Adeline. Uh, uh, Eshnai. It's not Eshnai. Uh, clue three. This character has been to Shadesmar. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Is it design? Not design. Mm -hmm. Pattern. Not pattern. Paladin. Not Calvin. <laughs> Shalon. Not Shalon. Kalu four. This character has been to emo. How do you spell? Oh, E M U L. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. Yasna. Not Yasna. Ivory. Not Ivory. That was my next. So glad that wasn't it. Woo. <laughs> I don't even know what you is. It's like in the middle somewhere, right? Uh, off to That's the like where they were west. fighting the war in uh, yeah. the war interlude. That's in true. Rhythm of war. In, uh, rhythm so you of have war. The, yeah. the, the mountain in the middle with Yuri Thero and Emo is kind of a little bit to the west of that. Emo and Takari fighting. Oh, yeah. Our testament. Not just, I like I like us just guessing all the, the cryptic. Technically, that's actually where the the honest friend live as well. They they that's live true. across like in Shay's Bar from email. Yeah, that's true. I, that's why I was like, it sounds so familiar, but I can't quite place it. It's true. The rivers match. Hmm. Uh boy, that's getting difficult. Um, yeah. Hoid. It is Hoyd. What? <laughs> what? Oh, it's never Hoyd. It's never, never Hoyd. <laughs> it's Hoyd this time in Clue 5. God damn. <laughs> Clue 5 is this character has been to Amia and they say Awab says he's been to Amia. <laughs> so, okay. Huh. All right. Okay. Okay. It's Hoyd. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Very good. I like that. All right. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. You can find us on 17 for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you could ever want. We have a very hopping Discord server where you can also talk about this stuff. Wow. And you can find us on Facebook, the social media site formerly known as Twitter. Uh, X.com. <laughs> X.com. 
Uh, and, you know, all the other places. You can hit that subscribe button. You know, that's fun. Buttons are fun to click, right? And your, your best place for 17th Shard and Brandon News are the news and Brandon Updates channels of the Discord. True. True. Because posting a message in a chat channel is very easy, and we don't have to worry about hashtags. <laughs> very true. Very true. Yeah. I don't worry about them anyway when I make a social media post. I can, I can tell from looking at the analytics. Well, you yeah. know. <laughs> well, you know. Just, just like have some pre made ones that are just like hashtag Brandon Sanderson, hashtag 17 shot. I just yeah. throw those in. Yeah. Just well, copy and paste every time. Look, I don't even want to go on Twitter, you know? <laughs> like, I just, I, That's like, fair. you know? But, and lastly, of course, you can support us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. We commission art. Wonderful. It's pretty sweet. Uh, and you can vote on what art we commission and see some behind the scenes stuff that we're putting in collections now. So that's pretty cool. You can look at what we did in the collections tab on Patreon. Links Instead in the description. Like, and we'll see you search. next time for Secret Project 4 Reactions, which probably won't be on a Sunday. It'll probably be a little bit later. So not quite two weeks from now, but it's going to be a little bit closer to Secret Project 4. 4's actual release date. So, so we'll see you all next time. Uh, bye. 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 Oh.